In this video on a uh, rebuild of a 4.3 liter V6 for marine use, um, I'm about to put uh, install the valve train. Um, the valve train consists of lifters. The lifters go down in these holes down here and they ride on the camshaft. And then the lifters um, are held in by these what's called uh, lifter trays. These are plastic here. And I'll explain the purpose of those in a minute. But um, the lifters are held in place by the lifter trays and then you have push rods that go on top of the lifters and the push rods move the valves up and down through rock arms and uh, you'll see later in the video what those are. Um, but for now, um, I, just, I just finished cleaning these lifter trays and uh, I cleaned my lifters about a year ago and I cleaned them and put them in this uh, container to keep dust off of them so they're ready to go. So all you do is you, uh, you take your lifter and you lubricate, this is a roller ball, a ball bearing, excuse me, not ball bearing, needle bearing roller. And it rolls on the camshaft down in there. Um, in 19, I think it was around 1987, GM started using these and they have uh, they pretty much uh, doubled, at least double or triple the life of a, a typical general, general motor small block at the time, or 4.3 liter or 5.7, 5.0, whatever. Um, because the roller rolls on the cam, it doesn't wear the cam out near as bad or near as much. Um, these things are notorious for wearing out, uh, wearing out lifters in the uh, old days. Um, if I can find one, oh, here's one. I just happen to have a, what's called a flat tappet lifter for a Toyota Land Cruiser. And you see, there's there's nothing um, uh, mechanic, there's nothing, no mechanism in this thing. It's just a flat, a piece of metal flat on one end, and with a little. Uh, cylinder or a little cone on the other end the push rod fits down in this cone and this lifter just rides up and down in the hole and this is what's called a flat tappet and it used to ride on the cam so you can see without any kind of roller there's a lot of wiping action between the cam lobe and this lifter and if you don't have proper oil or if the, if the thing's not installed right it'll wipe it's called wiping the lobe it'll make the uh, cam lobe go flat in no time so this is old technology, General Motors stopped using it in 1986. In 1987, they went with, um, in 1987, they went with roller lifters and they are, they're the best you can get. So you want to stay away from any motor older than 1987 because it will have flat tappet uh, lifters and you don't, want to, you don't want that. So at this time, I'm going to put the rollers in. And uh, what you do is you uh, pour some drops of oil in here inside the needle bearings. You oil the body of the the, uh, the body of the uh, lifter, and uh, then you you uh, put it in the engine. Now some people soak them. These are what's called hydraulic lifters. So some people soak them so that they want oil to go in this hole right there. So how it works is oil pressure from the engine goes in this hole and pumps up this lifter, and uh, the lifter takes up the slack between the the uh, the mechanical slack in the system. Um, but when I first build engines, I just let it pump up on its own once it starts. It'll, it'll pump up in a, in a few seconds or in less than 30 seconds and build the lifter up. So you waste a lot of time if you uh, pre-soak them. I don't think you can get much oil in there anyway. So, um, Matter of fact, when I, when I build this engine or when I uh, install this engine, I'm going to um, do what's called uh, prime it. And when I prime it, it'll pump up these lifters then. So there'll be oil in the lifters uh, before this thing ever starts running. So, all right, this time I'm gonna put the uh, camera down and uh, start putting lifters in these holes. Again, when you had flat tappets, if you took an engine apart, you had to put the flat tappet lifter back on the exact same lobe that was running on the cam. In other words, if you took a flat tappet lifter out of this hole, when you put it back together, it had to go right back in that same hole unless it was a brand new lifter on a brand new cam. If either one, either the cam was used or the, or if the lifter was used, you had to put it back in the same hole. Um, with these modern roller lifters, you don't have to worry about it. Um, one of the things these, uh, this lifter tray does is if you'll notice, um, it keeps the lifter from spinning. When it fits in here, it fits in like that. So this plastic tray will not let that lifter twist. It only keeps, it keeps it, it keeps this roller running uh, true on the cam lobe, so that it doesn't. Because if it twisted like, if it twisted like that, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't roll. It would just slide on the cam. So you, you don't want that. So these plastic trays keep the lifter. It allows the lifter to move up and down like this. If you look closely, you see how it's kind of squared off. It allows it to move up and down like this, back and forth like that. 
but it doesn't allow the twist in the hole. And that's what keeps the lifter uh, centered over the cam. So at this time, I'm gonna wall them and install the lifters. And uh, once I get the, all the lifters done, then I'll install the uh, push rods. Um, these are the screws that hold it down. You see there's a shoulder on it. What that means is that the uh, shoulder keeps the uh, bolt from cracked or from crushing the plastic and, and cracking it. So you can tighten these down as far as you want. It won't hurt the plastic because that shoulder prevents that from happening. And I'm sure there's a torque setting or on the uh, in the manual for how tight I need to go. I'm also gonna put blue Loctite on them so that blue Loctite so they don't back out you know, from vibration. And in case anybody doesn't know what blue Loctite is, here's a bottle of it right here. It's called Thread Locker Blue. And it, um, it basically is a plastic, it's a liquid, but it hardens it to a plastic and it takes up space in the thread so that the uh, bolts don't uh, vibrate out. It's kind of like a light duty glue. All right, so at this time, I'm gonna put the lifters in and then I'll uh, start the video up again when they're all in and, uh, and the, uh, these trays are fastened out, hold them in place. All right, this is a follow-up video to the lifter installation. Um, in the last video, I mentioned I was gonna put the, uh, the lifters in the holes and then put the uh, lifter trays on there. That is now done. Um, uh, the bolts were right in there and right in there. I could not torque them down because my torque wrench would not fit in between here and there. So uh, that leads to a couple observations. Um, but anyway, the lifters are in. Uh, both, all four bolts were tightened down, so the lifter trays and the lifters are in. Um, if I had to do this over again, I would have put these lifters and these trays in a long time ago before I put the oil pan on. Um, for one, the, you definitely need to do that before you put the heads on because the heads block access to the bolts and you can't torque them down. Now, I can get a wrench in there, but I can't get a torque wrench in there to check, check what the torque is. But I put Loctite on it and tightened it down what I thought was reasonable, so I'm pretty confident with that. Now, um, having said that, if you do this with the head zone, you can't get access, but also if the oil pan zone and you happen to drop a socket and it goes down that hole, or if, or if it goes down somewhere in there or anywhere in these holes, uh, you gotta pull the oil pan back off to get it out. So unless you shake, unless you turn the motor upside down and shake it, you're not getting that bolt back out or that socket out. So um, putting these on at this stage is, uh, was a mistake. I should have put these on. I should have put the lifters in and the trays at least before I put the heads on or before I put the oil pan on. But you can put them on as soon as the cam's in. Um, matter of fact, I could have uh, made that part of the cam installation and gone ahead and installed the lifters and the trays. Um, even though I was going to flip it upside down, the, the trays would have kept the lifter from coming out. So um, a good time to put these lifters and trays in is, is right after you install the cam. Um, so um, having said that, another issue is um, every one of these lifters I inspected as I was putting them in, and I found two lifters that had problems. They, I don't know if you can tell, but the rollers on this, let me see if I can find it, um, right in there, right there. You can see it's kind of pitted. Um, to me, that's a problem. This motor is a rebuilt marine motor from a reputable or supposedly reputable marine engine manufacturer, rebuilt engine manufacturer. And I know that because it belonged to my brother. Um, and he, you know, he only had maybe a couple hours on this new, on this engine going down the river when it um, locked up on him. And it locked up because of the uh, front, the uh, spun bearings I showed you in another video, but, um, or in the other video of the, of the teardown of this motor. But, um, I don't, and I don't think these lifters would be damaged to that extent um, in that sort of time. Um, not saying, not making accusations, but I would say these lifters were like that when they were put in from the get go. Um, I don't, I didn't see any bad loads on the cam. So usually when you have a when you have a lifter that's got a bad spot on, you have an associated load, uh, uh, messed up load on the cam to go with it. And I didn't see that, so that leads me to believe that. Um, these lifters, let me see if you can find this one here. I'm looking at the, inject, the lifter here. Um, a little bit right there, you can already see it. But that's what happens when a lifter sits with water on it. So maybe my brother left it sitting around with water in the engine too long. I don't know. Um, I just, uh, 
got my doubts about these two lifters and where they're how they got damaged like that. But anyway, um, the point is, as you install these lifters, you want to inspect the rollers very carefully to make sure there's no blemishes. A good roller will have absolutely no blemishes at all. It'll be smooth as can be smooth as can be. Uh, be smooth as glass. So and it should be smooth as glass all the way around. So you want to inspect your lifters as you put them in. Um, you really can't tell if a lifter is going to fail as far as its pumping up capability to take up the hydraulic pump up to take up the slack. You won't know that until you start the motor and you have a noisy lifter or a noisy valve. So that's when you'll know. So especially if you use lifters or new ones for that matter. Um, I've learned in my life that new parts, used parts, as long as they use parts in decent shape, you're good. Matter of fact, I'd rather have a used part that's in good shape because you know it was you got that far, so it's probably still going to be good. If it shows any signs of wear, obviously you don't want to use it, but. Um, Anyway, with new parts, there's no guarantee they're going to work any better. So, um, all right, so the lifter trays are in. Um, I'm now going to put in the push rods and the the rocker arms. So let's do the push rods next. And uh, once I get those, uh, well, I'll show them to you now. Here's one. Uh, I have them all in the bag. So this is what a push rod looks like. It's just a steel rod about seven and a half inches long, somewhere in there. It's got a little ball on each end, and it's also hollow, so it all travels. The way this engine is oiled, the lifters on top, the, the lifters up here get oil from down here. The lifter, a hydraulic valve lifter, pumps oil up through there, or up through there's one up there, up through there, up through the push rod and out the top of the, the rock arm. So that's how the oil gets from the bottom of the motor up here to the top to lubricate all these valve lifters. Um, and that's a, the hydraulic lifter has a dual function of basically also taking up slack but also delivering oil to the top of the engine through, the, through a hollow push rod. Um, one other thing, lifters, the lifters, the push rods, and the rock arms um, are no longer adjustable. Before 19, I guess somewhere in the, I'm not sure if it was around 1990 or 1989, that's when they went with these uh, roller rocker arms, but even before that, I think they were not adjustable. Somewhere back in the 80s, they went from what's called a uh, ball and stud uh, rocker pivot to a roller rocker pivot, uh, also known as roller rockers. Um, the um, ball and stud had a nut on top of it that you could turn or loosen, and it was very tight. Uh, it was, I'm trying to the, the friction nut, and it wouldn't spin off by itself. So if you loosen or tighten that nut, you could adjust the play in the rock arm. And there was a special technique to tighten it up to where you went about halfway down through the play of the, the uh, lifter. But modern rock arms and uh, push rods, there's no adjustability. So when you tighten it up, uh, you're counting on the the adjustability of the, of the hydraulic lifter to take up any mechanical slack that might be in there. And that's how it's designed. The only way that I know to adjust it is they make, they make an adjustable push rod, a adjustable length push rod that you use to find the midpoint of travel of your lifter. And then you buy push rods, solid push rods of the length of that adjustable push rod. The adjustable push rod is not something you use permanently, it's a test tool. So it helps you determine the proper push rod length, and then you order all the push rods to be the same length. The, um, and you might ask, why would you need to do that? Well, if you ever have the head milled, if you have this head milled down or the block uh, deck shaved down a little bit, you're changing the geometry, you're changing the distance of this head from the block. So that push rod needs to be a little bit shorter if you mill the heads and the, and the block deck because everything's going to be closer together or cl sitting closer to the center line of the engine. So in that case, you would need to uh, use a shorter push rod. Um, but there may be other reasons. Some people use uh, different rocker arms. They'll, use a, they'll go from a 1.5 ratio or 1.7 ratio. So if you use a different ratio rocker arm, you may need a longer or shorter push rod to, to uh, take, an effect, take into account that, that rocker arm geometry has changed. So there's actually a, a big, I won't say a science, but a lot of study on uh, uh, rocker arm geometry and push rod length and all that. It's, uh, it's out of the scope of this, this video, but I'm just letting you know that it's out there. So at this time, I'm gonna, uh, I think the push rods are clean. I'm gonna inspect, I've got them bagged up and I think I remember cleaning them. So I'm gonna go ahead and inspect them and then install, in, install them if they have already been cleaned. So I'll show you what they look like when they're clean or when they're installed, excuse me. All right, the uh, push rods are now installed in this 4.3 liter V6 and uh, there's a total of 12 of them, six on this side and six on the other. Um, a few installation tips is uh, obviously I got them really clean, uh, as clean as I can get them. 
But what I do is I take a uh, oil cumin like that and squirt a few drops of oil down in that hole there, 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 wherever the lift rod falls into. And uh, that way it pre-lubricates the top of the, uh, the lifter and the bottom of the push rod. Uh, just so there's not metal on metal contact. Um, also, you can see when you put the push rods in, they're dedicated round holes for these push rods to go up in through. So you make sure you put them in the right hole. Don't put them in the. There's a bigger hole right here for oil to drop, oil patches to go back through. You don't want to put them in there. So um, the push rods are installed. Um, let me see if there's any other things I can say about them. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, one thing unique happened in this situation is uh, as I was cleaning the push rods, um, I put them in a bag way back when I took this motor apart. And as I got them out, I found a unique pattern or unique blemish or something on each on uh, most of these. Well, actually eight of them. And I don't understand what caused this. It's, uh, it's like something rubbed against it. It's, every one of them had that kind of twist pattern. And uh, one thing about these push rods, they don't rotate. Um, like I was saying before, if you have, in the old days, if you had a flat tappet lifter like this, this lifter is not really flat. This surface is not flat. It's actually convex, meaning it has a little bit of a dome to it. And when it rides on the lifter, or excuse me, it rides on the lobe, it rides on the side, on the one half of the lobe, and the lobe is sloped. So as it rides on the lobe, it twists every, I've got a video actually on the, under Toyotas, but you can see the, the, the lifter will spin like this in its bore on the, as it rides over the cam lobe. And it also spins the push rod with it. Uh, but in this case, these push rods are, these are uh, roller lifters, they don't spin, so these push rods don't spin. So um, to have a wear pattern like it's got, like I said, it's on eight of them. It's kind of a spiral. I'm trying to get it to focus. Let's see if we can get it full. There you go. Kind of a spiral wear pattern. It's like something rubbed up against it or whatever, I'm not sure. But it looks like the, the chrome or whatever's worn off of it, so I didn't use them. Um, I have other V6 cords. I've got one right there. I've got another one over here. So I've got other V6 cords that I just uh, used to uh, pull the push rods off those cords. So um, I now have 12 push rods installed, and I'm uh, about to put the uh, rocker arms on the, the rocker arms go up here. And uh, so as soon as I get those uh, in, the, in my shop and ready to install, I'll show what those look like.